Hello, I'm JW. Now, uh, a while ago I had a look at this stuff, which is the magic gel, a sort of substance you uh, mix up and then it sets into a gel substance which can cover over connectors and other things which may get uh, water near them. And of course there are a lot of comments on that video, so uh, this time I'm just going to look at some of those and hopefully answer some of those inquiries on that and uh, see what actually happens with those. Now, first comment from Will Ford. So once the two bottles are open, do they go off because the seal has been breached? And the answer is no, they don't, because the bottles don't actually have any kind of seal other than the uh, lids on them. And it doesn't actually react with the air or anything, it's just purely when they're mixed together. The box also states that there is no shelf life, so it's pretty much a uh, lasts forever type of thing. Uh, Phil Dixon, uh, I buy two pipe epoxy resin from Poundland, which sealed anything. Yeah, you can use epoxy to seal electrical connectors. Of course, the problem with that is you can't undo them afterwards. It is a completely permanent thing. And epoxy is normally used for underground things which you're going to never, ever need to undo again. But say, the problem there, of course, you can't uh, remove it afterwards. Now, Paul Morgan wanted the test repeated with gelatin as a normal strawberry jelly mix from the supermarket. And uh, we're going to actually try that now, but uh, the jelly we have is actually orange. So uh, let's uh, go and see what happens with that. So what we've got here then is some orange jelly. And uh, just put some in there, it is set uh, as much as these things do. And there's the connectors down in the bottom, so exactly the same as we had before with the actual uh, proper stuff. Now, uh, this stuff is 99% water, so uh, the chances of this being insulating are pretty much nil. But nevertheless, we'll uh, give it a go anyway. So I've got the wires uh, attached up here already, and on the uh, insulation resistance, of course. Now we'll start off, I think, with just 50 volts because uh, really I don't expect this to have any kind of insulating properties whatsoever. So let's see what we get. So as you can see, it's basically zero, which means it's basically a short circuit. And um, we see the test voltage, actually only about four volts being put through there, so uh, pretty much uh, useless. And even if we select the higher voltage, say a thousand, well, again, it doesn't even get there because, again, the uh, 4 volt there limiting the current that goes through it. So uh, the answer to that is it's not insulating in the slightest. And so given it's 99% water, not entirely surprising. This being mostly water, if you actually uh, pull it out there, you'll see it's far more sort of liquid and uh, disgusting than the other stuff. And uh, so it, uh, it's a very wet and fairly unpleasant looking substance. But uh, there you go, so uh, that's uh, sort of what that's like. And I say it's quite a uh, vile looking material, but uh, nevertheless uh, not insulating in the slightest. Now we also mentioned it's normal silicone from the hardware store, and applied to stages because it obviously does take quite a long time to dry. Now silicone was something that a number of other people mentioned, including uh, Electronic Noob Blog, I say yeah, they use sanitary silicone which uh, obviously may or may not be suitable. And then we have this one here where some silicone grease was used and again uh, silicone sealant there. And uh, as it's pointed out by several people there, the main problem with silicone sealant is that uh, the acid cure versions uh, tend to destroy actual copper conductors, or at least there's a potential for them to do that. And if you get the neutral cure one which doesn't smell of vinegar when it sets, then that should be a better choice. So yeah, you can use silicone, but uh, be aware that the uh, that sure acid cure versions can actually damage the uh, conductors as well, so it may be something to avoid. Now a lot of people asked uh, what would happen if it was uh, heated up after it had been set, so uh, Ian Scott Johnston there, what happens if you heat it up after it's set, does it become any more flowable? Green Silver, again, does it get runny when it's hot? Uh, Tommy Oz, uh, what happens when it gets hot? Darren Tipple, uh, is there a way of returning it to a portable state perhaps by heating it up? And the answer to that is uh, given here, which is once it's cross-linked, it's set that way, like any two-part resin formula. And uh, it probably is the case, but uh, nevertheless, we'll try uh, heating it up anyway, just to see what happens. So heating it up, then we've got this uh, metal lid here, just a piece of uh, basically steel from a can of something. And obviously we have the uh, gel from before, it's the same one that was used in the previous video. And something to uh, identify the temperature with, so just going to heat the metal up put some of this on it and then see what actually happens. So here is the lid on the electric heater and we'll just wait for that to heat up to a suitable temperature and then we'll just say, shove some of the gel on it and see uh, what gives. Now the plate's been on there for some time so let's just see what sort of temperature we're going to be getting there. So 
So you see the metal layer is well over 100 degrees centigrade, so far above the boiling point of water. In fact, it's actually uh, well above there, sort of 115, 115 area. Depending where exactly where we put the probe, but uh, nevertheless, uh, pretty hot. So uh, let's just place a piece of the gel on the plate and let's see if it melts. So as you can see, uh, it clearly does not melt. It's just basically sitting there doing pretty much absolutely nothing. So uh, there we have it. And it's not sort of smoking or burning or whatever else. So uh, again, a fairly inert kind of material. Now another inquiry was whether the gel itself is particularly conductive, as in you could use it to uh, sort of put over circuit boards or whatever, and whether it would conduct the heat away. Well, let, let's have a look then, because uh, gel has obviously been on there, so just make a minor adjustment to the uh, plate there. So temperature again here. So on the actual uh, plate here, let's put that on the uh, metal there. Again, we're getting that fairly high temperature. So on the metal part of the plate, Again, we're getting a region of sort of 100 degrees or so there. In fact, probably well above as the uh, thing heats up. Let's just check the temperature of the gel itself. As you can see, that's considerably lower. That's only a region of about 60 odd. And if we go in this piece above here, actually it's in the region of sort of 35. So uh, not particularly well uh, conducting of the heat there because, say, that's only in the sort of 38 region. And yet the plate below, of course, is uh, far hotter say in the region of sort of uh, 100 degrees or so, but uh, yeah, again, go back to the gel, it's considerably cooler, so thermal conductivity is rather poor and therefore not going to be any use for something which is going to get hot, because of course it would uh, not conduct the heat at all, it would just basically keep the heat in a single place. Now Music Man 2008 uh, would have liked to see the whole encapsulated assembly submerged in a bucket of water for a few hours and then an insulation test again. Now uh, we're not going to do that, but I have used this product uh, over several years and none of the things I've put underground have actually uh, been reported as faulty, so uh, it is the case that uh, when it goes underground or gets wet the water doesn't actually get in, certainly over a period of uh, many months and years, so that seems to be uh, perfectly fine. Now the other part of this is that it says we used to use a brown putty type of filler in metal conduit boxes years ago. Now this particular brown putty type material is still available. Here's a picture of it and it's called R391 and basically it's a uh, putty type material, it's a sort of a dirty brown colour. It's a single part product, you don't have to mix it up or anything, although it says there are two packs of 250 in there, that just means there's two packs of the same stuff. And basically you just uh, gouge it over terminals and other things, you know, box are shown in the drawing there, and that keeps out the moisture and so on. And you can also pry it out afterwards, but it does tend to go fairly hard after a while, as uh, most normal putty tends to do. I don't know how many people actually use this stuff, but nevertheless it is still available and you of course can still use it and it does the job reasonably well. And of course being a fairly soft and brown squashy type of material, it also has another name, the first part of which is the word dog, and I'm sure you can guess what the other word is. And of course the final thing is how well does the gel burn, asked by B Sway 9999 Of course all the gear no idea was secretly hoping that we would set the gel on fire. So uh, let's uh, get to that straight away and uh, see what actually happens when a flame is applied. So here's a bit of the gel on that metal lid and we're just simply going to uh, put a flame on it, see what happens. So as you can see straight away, yes it does burn. There's the sort of orangey flames coming off of that stuff there. So it certainly is, and uh, taking the flame away there, you see it's continuing to burn uh, pretty well. So it's most definitely a flammable substance. And uh, again, apply a bit more heat there, you'll see it's still burning away again once we take the flame away. So not so extinguishing, and of course uh, fairly flammable as well. Now I actually left this to burn, and this is what it looks like about a minute after removing the flame there. Now, as you can see, it's still burning away there, and it's sort of puffed up into this white type of substance, and there's a certain amount of white smoke coming off as well, so uh, who knows what that could be, probably not uh, desirable to uh, breathe that in. So uh, let's uh, just leave it as long as it goes and uh, see what happens at the end. Now this is about two minutes later, and you see it's pretty much uh, not burning anymore, but there's still a fair amount of smoke coming off there, 
and I say it's turned that sort of white uh, material there. And you can see at the bottom there's still some of the original gel left, again proving how poorly it conducts the heat there. Now if we just poke at it here, this implement, you'll see it's quite a fragile and uh, crumbly material now. And it's sort of turned white, sort of a powdery mess there. And so the bottom is still the uh, gel stuff. So uh, not entirely sure what uh, kind of stuff that's now turned into, but probably not recommended to uh, get near that. So uh, there you have it. So that's magic gel and answers to at least some of the inquiries which were posted on the previous video. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.